Hello and welcome to our first day here on p o Aurora. Today is a sea day and we are really looking forward to showing you what's on offer. Hi, if you're new to our channel, we are Tom and Dom Travel and we release a new cruise related video every single week. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a like. Okay, so the morning started off with us heading straight to breakfast. I suppose we were up pretty early for a sea day, well for us anyway. So we headed up to the buffet area. Instead of taking the lift this morning, we did decide to actually walk outside and go up the stairs along Aurora's tiered aft and we got some great views of the wake of the ship. It was a little bit grey and miserable, however the fresh air was beautiful. Now the buffet area here on Aurora isn't that big. Aurora is a smaller ship but we still find it very very tight here and quite difficult to find a seat at peak times. Now for breakfast this morning I chose to have full English breakfast without the egg. It was reasonably good, the bacon was nice. The only thing probably was the toast. I'm never pretty keen on toast on any cruise ship really so it's not a criticism on p &L. The toast is pre-prepared so it's pretty much cold when you get it so not great for buttering but other than that great. For my breakfast I just decided to have a couple of bowls of cereal cereal after all of the indulgence last night especially with our deluxe drinks package I think I just needed a little bit of hydration so a couple of bowls of cereal did me well as well as some coffee and some orange juice now the coffee in the buffet not very nice at all I couldn't drink it I had one sip and that was me done fortunately because we do have that drinks package we can go and have costas whenever we want so that's exactly what we did after breakfast we went and headed down to raffles bar raffles was incredibly busy so that's the onboard coffee shop on deck eight there were no seats available at all so myself and Tom went straight to the counter and asked for a couple of takeaway coffees that's when we were told sorry we're too busy for takeaway where you need to go somewhere else and to go to the glass house and try there instead. p and have recently changed their policy so they're not giving away any paper cups anymore. Instead you get these lovely plastic blue takeaway cups that you will need to return. We arrived at the glass house and asked once again for two lattes to take away. They said to us sorry we don't have enough of these reusable plastic cups so we can't do takeaway coffees here. You need to go to Raffles to get takeaway coffees. To which we then said Raffles have told us to come here, you're telling us to go to Raffles, what do we do? To be fair on the staff in the glass house they really were a little bit baffled by why we'd been sent there because they basically said we don't have any of the takeaway cups. Yeah. So what they did do in the end is decided to send one of the members of the team to look for some of the plastic cups. They came back and they did have some, fantastic. Now the plastic reusable cups come in two sizes, a medium or a small, there's no large option. You get the small included with the classic package and you get the medium sized cup included with the deluxe package. So after a little bit of a kerfuffle and a wait in the glass house, we did manage to get a couple of lattes. Myself and Tom really do enjoy sea days on board a cruise ship so we took the opportunity to go right up to the top and have a walk all the way across the top decks and it was a little bit blustery a little bit wet and miserable as we previously said but it was really nice to be back out at sea again the one thing we couldn't do was have a look at right at the front of the ship on the highest point just above the bridge and the crow's nest there because that was closed off we presume because of the weather but the rest of the top decks we had a lovely wander around we were quite surprised to see a full-size court up on the top deck oh, yeah. and Tom did have a go at playing a little bit of basketball. I think he's got a taste for it now after our Island Princess cruise and he did actually score, well you don't call it a goal do you? A hoop. No, a hoop. <laughs> basketball experts we are not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. But I got the ball through the hoop. Well done Tom on his first go. Good going. They've also got a number of golf ranges available for you to practice that perfect swing. We don't play golf. No. But it is there and it's a target that you hit your golf ball at inside a netted area really, so whatever you call that. One unusual thing to note about Aurora is there's a deck 13. There's a deck 13. Which is a little bit strange and a little bit peculiar because 13 is perceived as an unlucky number. We have sailed on other cruise lines such as MSC and Costa where you will find a deck 13. But this is the first time we've seen a deck 13 on a British or an American cruise line. 
at the very aft of the ship they've got a really large area with a number of deck games available so if you're interested there is plenty of those types of activities available on board. After all of that walking around the ship and only having a light little breakfast, well myself, it was now time for lunch and we were both feeling a little bit peckish. So we made our way down to the Medina restaurant on deck six and we bumped into the Sisters on the Seas and we all decided to have a little bit of lunch together, which was lovely. So when you enter the restaurant, you need to give your cabin number as well as the number of people that you want seated. Today there was four of us and there was a table available for four straight away. We we were escorted to a table not far from the window and we were soon ready to order. We have mentioned in the past on our previous P&O cruises that we do find the lunch menu to be a little bit sort of lacking in variety and today was no different. We both ordered to start the butternut squash soup. Yeah, of course, I normally have soup, but Dom decided to go for it as well today. Now, the soup was delicious, thoroughly enjoyed it. We were offered a bread roll. If you watched our previous vlog from yesterday, you'll know that we were a little bit concerned because they just scraped the butter onto our side plates. But lo and behold, at lunch today, there was a butter dish. So I was very, very pleased. Then we ordered our mains. I had a ham baguette, which was absolutely beautiful the ham on it was really tasty really enjoyed that but once again it was in a soft roll not like a crusty baguette as i thought it might have come in because you can't beat a crusty roll for my main i went for one of my firm favorite dishes and that was the cumberland sausage and mashed potato with peas and gravy and I ate the lot. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Highly, highly recommend it if you do love a little bit of sausage and mash. Then for dessert, I went for the chocolate option, which was the Chinese spiced cake. Yes, it was lovely. The cake was probably a little bit dry, but it was very interesting. It tastes a little bit Christmassy, like a Christmas style cake to me, but very nice. Again, there was nothing particular on the menu that I thought, wow, I've got to try that. So I just ended up with some vanilla and strawberry ice cream. Very, very tasty. During our meal, we did order a glass of wine each as well, so that washed down our meal perfectly. After dinner, we headed outside and had a little walk of the prom deck. The weather outside was pretty chilly, but we did enjoy a little walk around. We probably did about three or four laps of the prom, which we really enjoyed. The promenade here on Aurora is a full wraparound prom, and it's just really nice to get out there, stretch your legs, and take in those sea views. After our walk around the promenade deck, we decided decided to head inside and have a brief look around the shops. For the size of the ship, Aurora does have a good selection of shops. There is a duty-free shop, a perfume and beauty shop, general clothes shop, watches and jewellery. Yeah. So there's lots of choice. Considering the size of the ship, they have got a lot of shops on board. As we were right near the theatre, so we popped our heads in to see what was going on and we found out there was a quiz going on in there, the Pinnacle Quiz. We only managed to catch the end of it, but it was really entertaining. The bit that we saw, there was an anagram on screen and you had to guess what that anagram was. Well, we probably struggled to work it out until the host of the quiz gave us some clues and eventually we worked out that it was Mount Everest was the answer. There's a little help if you do end up doing that quiz. We've got to give credit because it was Lizzie from Sisters on the Sea that actually pointed it out and went, oh, that's Mount Everest because all three of us were stood there looking as if uh, we'd been hit by a truck. <laughs> no, we we got a clue. No clue. So after a very busy sea day, we decided decided to go and have a nice little quiet drink up in the crow's nest on deck 13. Now we've got to say that the crow's nest is one of our favourite venues here on Aurora. It's a beautifully large venue with loads and loads of natural light, comfortable seats and the service has been absolutely exceptional. Yeah we do find the crow's nest offers a better selection of drinks and the service level tends to be a little bit better up there. It does feel a bit more of an exclusive area I and mean, it has a really nice feel to it so it's one of the places we do really love on board. After a drink and a nice relaxing time in the crow's nest we decided to come back to the cabin to get ready for the evening. When we got back to the cabin there was still no news from our issues with the cabin so we'll just have to wait and see. As you know we are in a sea view cabin with no sea view. There are people in the hot tub behind us which is why the curtains are closed today. Their clothes are hanging just outside our room which is lovely. So for their dignity we've closed the curtain. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with the community but it just seems to be non-existent on board. Even if you saw our vlog from embarkation day, there was no communication for the delays on embarkation and we still have not had much communication since, have we, from anyone on board. So no. it is... Um 
a little bit disappointing. A little bit disappointing. We got ready in a cabin and we went out and made the most of it. This evening we had a reservation at seven o'clock for the beach house. Now we've not tried the beach house before. We pre-booked our reservation online a couple of weeks ago when the restaurant booking system opened and we did have to pay a small surcharge and it came to around about £15 for the two of us. Now for the beach house that £15 you can pay that and not pay anything additional from the menu. There are a number of things on that menu that do incur an additional charge. So of course we chose things that did incur an additional charge. <laughs> but they were absolutely delicious. On most P&O ships the beach house is a small allocated area of the main buffet and here on Aurora it's no different. So there's a section right at the back of the buffet that during the evening is closed off and pretty much and that is the beach house. It wasn't too busy in there. It was very quiet in there in all honesty. Even though it said it was fully booked, there were plenty of empty tables inside. Now, to start off with, I went for the potato skins with bacon. They were much, much bigger than I thought they were going to Huge. be. Huge. They are included in the price of the beach house, so there's no extra cost for the potato skins. Super tasty, but I ate probably about one of the potato skins because I knew that I've got a big main course coming up, but you managed to eat some of mine. I had half of one. I decided to have the hush puppies and I was really surprised. They are deep fried sweet corn with a bit of flour and some jalapeno peppers. Really tasty. Came with a little bit of sour cream and I thought thoroughly enjoyed them. Then for Maine, we both pushed the boat out a little bit. I went for the ribs, so you get two sets of ribs, plenty of meat on them, beautiful meal. They came with fries, barbecue sauce, also some small pots of ketchup, mayo, really good. The ribs were superb. The meat just fell off the bone, incredibly tasty and delicious, and we'd highly, highly recommend them again. Now, in terms of an additional charge, they were only an extra three pounds 95 which we think is absolutely incredible value and we definitely have it again then don went for the steak on the hot stone and that was spectacular yes they delivered this beautiful 10 ounce fillet steak on a salt lava rock it is advertised as self-cook and i can understand why i like my steak a little bit on the medium to well done side and it just meant i could cook it absolutely perfectly came with fries onion rings a range of dips i thoroughly enjoyed it it's one of my most favorite speciality meals that i've ever had so what you need to do to cook your steak is it comes as a whole piece of steak pretty much rare doesn't it you need to slice it up pop those slices on the hot stone and then cook it yourself to your liking and we both shared both of each other's meals and it was spectacular so we will definitely be doing that again the additional charge for the hot lava fillet steak was seven pound not too bad at all so it worked out around about 14 pound for one of us to have a fillet steak now you couldn't get that anywhere else no and on other cruise lines i think you would pay a lot more for this experience so it is something we would definitely recommend and then on to the dessert i chose to go for the triple chocolate fudge cake came out warm it wasn't dry very tasty i went for the chocolate and vanilla candy shop cheesecake it was spectacular it came with an oreo on the top really unusual texture probably not the usual cheesecake texture that you would get but it was tasty and i just managed to squeeze it in after all that lovely main course that we had along with that we did have a glass of wine each but to finish off our meal we ordered a speciality cocktail which came in a pineapple shaped glass yes a pineapple shaped glass if you know you know it's called the long and short of it it's a passion fruit and coconut milk cocktail very rich it is included in the deluxe drinks package and it, you can only get it in the beach house it was a nice experience to have would i have another one again i don't think i would no it was a heavy drink to have after a full meal i would say yeah. that but it did taste nice it did. After the beach house, we made our way once again up to the crow's nest. This time, Tom treated himself to a lovely passion fruit martini, the first one he's had on this cruise. Yeah, very, very nice once again. Came with a separate glass of Prosecco, all freshly made. One of my favourite cocktails. I went for a beautiful gin and tonic once again. And what I am enjoying is, as part of the deluxe drinks package, you can get those premium mixers 
included. As we had seen the silent disco the night before, we thought we'd head down and see what it was like again. Yes, completely changing the tone from the crow's nest. This time it seemed a little bit more organised. The a member of the entertainment team had a lovely little desk with laptop. The headphones were organised in a much more logical way. It wasn't just thrown together like it felt last night. Yeah. Although there was relatively few passengers there, probably because it starts pretty early 9pm, it is just a nice place to have entertainment in the ship on that crystal pool area. And the crystal bar is located right next to the silent disco, so you're not far from your next drink. However, please be aware, no drinks on the dance floor. Around about 10 o'clock then, we decided to make our way down to the theatre for tonight's Headliners cast production show of Applause. The reason we went down early is because we know with production shows, doesn't matter what cruise line you are on, they are going to be busy and seats are definitely at a premium. The Curzon Theatre here on Aurora is an interesting theatre because it is slightly sloping and unfortunately there are some of the seats that are broken. So if you get there early, you can ensure that you're on a seat that actually works and you're not tilted forward. The theatre filled up very, very quickly. As we were early, we managed to get four good seats not far from the main stage. Applause is a musical review show that is full on, non-stop musical after musical after musical. It is probably one of our favourite shows we have ever seen on a cruise ship. That is saying something and it was spectacular. We thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the performance. They had a standing ovation at the end. The number of musicals that they've incorporated into this production, the number of costume changes was phenomenal. And it was a good mix of musicals all the way through the decade. So we had modern musicals like The Book of Mormon all the way through to classics like Les Mis. The finale was incredible really talented bunch of individuals. Mm. While we were in the theatre, we did bump into Ken Goes Cruising. So we've said after the theatre production, we'll go back up to the crow's nest so the we can have a chat, time. you know, the third time in a day. We can go back up to the crow's nest, have a little chat. We spent the rest of the evening in the crow's nest. So up in the crow's nest, we had Ken and Lindsay from Ken Goes Cruising, as well as Lizzie and Laura from Sisters on the Seas. And we had a really nice evening chatting, drinking, and just talking about our experience. Experiences. So they will also be doing videos about this cruise, so check them out if you get chance. After ours, of course. <laughs> Now it was time to round off the night in the way that we always do, is head up to the buffet. I really do appreciate a late night buffet. It's just really good to go up there and see a lovely little selection that you can munch out on after a few drinks. The late night buffet here on Aurora is really good. You can get a good selection of hot and cold food. So we did have a selection of the buffet, plus those hot chocolates that P and O are famous for in the evening. So you can get hot chocolate or Horlicks until the buffet closes. After our little munch in the buffet, we made our way back to the cabin because tomorrow is our first port day and New Year's Eve. So we needed to get a bit of sleep because we know it's going to be a little bit of a late one. We haven't booked anything. We have been to Hamburg previously, but we're just going to get off and have a little bit of explore. We're going to go around with Sisters on the Seas because they've never actually been to Hamburg. So we're going to feel a little bit like tour operators. And depending on how well the day goes, we may even get a tip. <laughs> Thanks for watching our first sea day here on P&O Aurora. If you've got any comments or questions, just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. If you want to support us and gain access to exclusive benefits, we're also available on Patreon. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free. And hit that bell and notification button to never miss a video from us. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.